What is going on guys? Welcome back. In this video today, we're going to learn how to automate Dropbox using Python. So let us get right into it. Now, before we get into the actual tutorial, I would like to mention that this video is sponsored by NordPass, which is a password manager made by the same company that's also behind NordVPN, which probably all of you guys know. And I encourage you to not skip this part because this can be quite interesting to you guys, especially if you have your own business with employees or if you have to share sensitive information with your coworkers. So NordPass is a password manager. By the way, you will find a link in the description down below where you can get it. And you can do very simple things like uh, store your passwords, a Facebook password, for example, some mail at gmail.com. And then I will have either my own password or I can generate one here. Then I can store this. I can also um, store uh, some secure notes about Wi-Fi codes, about alarm codes, something simple here, like this is the alarm code for the company. Uh, and I can share all of this with my coworkers, with my employees in a secure way. It's all stored in a uh, in an encrypted vault. You can share it. You can give permissions. You can take away permissions very easily. You can store credit card information. Um, here you can see also the shared items. You have some advanced features like a data breach scanner, which is going to tell you uh, how many of your emails, how many of your passwords are part of a breach scan, you can see that this one I just made up is part of 54 unresolved breaches, my own email is not, uh, you also have a password health dashboard uh, that you can look at here to see how many weak passwords or reused passwords you have. And this is just a very nice all in one solution, especially for businesses, because you can access this vault from everywhere from your computer, from your Linux system, from your Windows system, from your Mac system, uh, from everywhere, because you just need to log into your account with your master password, and then you have the access you can easily share. Uh, you can give permissions, you can take away permissions for passwords and pass keys. And this is just a nice all in one business solution. So make sure you check out the link in the description down below with a coupon code neural nine. Alright, so we're going to learn how to automate using Dropbox in Python. And this can then be used to automate your backup processes to automate your file synchronization across different systems or to do whatever you like with it, because we're going to learn how to upload and download files, and then you can build your own logic around it. You can say, if some system event occurs, I wanna do X, Y, Z, I wanna upload these three files, I wanna check for changes in those two files, I wanna download this directory and stuff like that. You can build your own logic that is custom to your workflow on top of what we're going to learn in this video today. Now for this video, I'm going to assume that you already have a Dropbox account, so I'm not going to go through the account creation process. Uh, but what we will uh, need to create is an application inside of Dropbox inside of your account. So an app, a Dropbox app that we can use um, with Python or that we can access the Dropbox through in Python using a token. Um, and for that, we're going to open up the browser and we're going to navigate to dropbox.com slash developers once you already have an account. So when you have an account, go to that URL and click on create apps. Um, and then we're going to just go for scoped access. And here now we can choose two types of applications or two types of access. Um, either you have the access to the full Dropbox, or you can have access to a specific um, folder that was or to a single folder that was specifically created for your application. Um, so the app folder, essentially, this is what we're going to do here. And then we're going to give the application a name, for example, neural app. Then we're going to create the application and what we need to do now here is we need to define the scope. So what do we want to be able to do here? Um, and for this, we're going to click here on scoped app and we're going to click on files, metadata, write, read, files, content, write and read. This is what we want to be able to do. Then we're going to go back to settings and with that setting now we're going to create a token. Um, and a token here, the access token will be generated down here. So we're going to click on generate. This is going to generate the token. And this is what we need to copy um, so that we can use it then in our application. So once we have all of this here, we're going to go into our development environment, I'm going to create a new file here, <clears throat> token.txt. I'm going to paste the token here, I'm going to close the file. And in Python, now we're going to load this token, we're going to say token equals 
open. Uh, you can see that my Dropbox installation already says you added two files, probably because we created the app and the app folder. Um, and here we're going to open now the token txt file in reading mode as f. And we're going to actually sorry, this is not correct. We're going to say with open as f token is going to be equal to f dot read this is going to give us the token. Um, now, the important thing is we don't have a blank second line, we don't have one. So we just have one line, otherwise, it's going to read an invalid token. And what we need now is we also need the Dropbox package for Python. So you open up your terminal, or your command line in general, so CMD on Windows, the terminal on Linux and Mac, and you type pip or pip three install, and then Dropbox like this. In my case, <clears throat> this is already installed, as you can see. And once you have that, you can go up here and you can say import Dropbox and import Dropbox.files. Then we load the token. And now what we're going to do is we're going to create a Dropbox instance. So we're going to say here dbx equals Dropbox.dropbox .dropbox with a capital D. And we're going to pass the token here in the constructor so that we can authenticate ourselves with the Dropbox uh, API. And then we're going to write two very simple functions, which are going to be called upload all local files and download all cloud files. Now, you don't have to call them that you can name them whatever you like. Uh, but I have this directory here, local files, I have the simple image one.jpg here, I'm going to create now some uh, text one.txt file, hello world, I'm going to create another txt file here, text two.txt, hello world again. And those are my local files, I want to upload all of them into the Dropbox. Now, let's just briefly see in my Dropbox here, I should now have a directory apps. And inside of that, I should have neural app. And in here now I have nothing. So I don't have any files in here. So what I can do now is I can go ahead and I can define a function upload all local files, you can again, call this whatever you like, you can also call the directory whatever you like. And what we're going to do now is we're going to say here. <clears throat> and for this, we're going to need to import OS which is a core Python package. So import OS. And then we're going to say for file in OS list directory. And the path is going to be just local files. So for every file in local files, we're going to open that file. So with open, and we're going to open os.path.join local files and the file name because this is not going to give you the full path This is going to give you just a file name, but the file name is inside of local files. So we have to join it to um, things here. So the directory name and the file name, we're going to open that in reading bytes mode. <clears throat> SF, and then we're going to say data is f dot read. So we get all the bytes and then we just say dbx dot files upload. And we want to upload the data. And where do we want to upload it to we want to upload it, it no, we want to upload it to f string before the variable, we're going to have a slash. And we're going to just have the file name here. So we're going to upload it to slash and then file or this is how you write this essentially you have the file name, and we're going to add a slash in front of it to put it um, in the directory here. So that is basically what we need to do. I can just call this upload all local files, I can run this. And I get a problem. What is that? Uh, you're not permitted to access this endpoint, because it does not have the required scope files content, right? Actually, it should have the required scope. So maybe we need to change that here. Let's go to permissions, file content, right? Shouldn't it have the permission? I'm not sure. Do I have to save something? Do I maybe have to reload this? Permissions, okay. Click submit when you're done making changes. Okay, so probably I forgot this. So we need to check all the boxes and we need to click on submit here. Now the permissions change were successful. Now we need to go back to settings 
and create a new token here. So generate again. We're now going to copy this one. We're going to go now into PyCharm again. I'm going to replace this token and now it should work. There you go. And now you can see in my Dropbox, I have image one, text one with the respective content and text two with the respective content. And of course, the image, as you can see here, is also here. Um, and now, of course, what I can do is I can delete the files locally. So I don't have them in my directory anymore. And I can now write a function that downloads all the cloud files. So we're going to call the second function here, def download all cloud files. And here what we're going to do is we're going to iterate over the entries in the cloud, not locally. So we're not going to do OS list directory, we're going to iterate over the entries that we have uh, in a cloud, and then we're going to download all the individual files. And this is easier, because now we just have to say for entry in dbx dot files, underscore list underscore folder, just an empty string here dot entries. And we're just going to say dbx dot file files underscore download to file. And we're going to join again here OS path join local files and the respective entry dot name. Um, there you go. So that is that. This is what we want locally. This is the path we want to save this locally. And the remote path is actually, um, again, an F string with a slash and here with entry dot name. So again, to summarize this, I hope you were able to see all of this here because of my camera. Um, so we go through the entries that we can find remotely in the in the file list, and then we download every individual file to that path local files, which is this directory here, with the respective name of the file that we find in the cloud. And we get this file then by saying slash file name, and we store it locally with the same file name in local files. That's the basic idea. So now we can comment this out, we can say download all cloud files. And when I run this here, you can see that I again have image one, text one, text two. So this is the basic functionality. As I mentioned, you can now go ahead and already build some logic around this. So you can say every time I run a command, you can create your own Python uh, terminal script. Every time you run a command, you can say uh, you want to to download all the files. Or maybe you want to say every time I run a certain application, every time something happens in the system, I want to update these files, something like that. Um, now, sometimes, however, it may be reasonable to not download or upload all files, but only the files where some changes have been made. And how can you check if a change has been made without downloading the file and comparing it? For this, you have a hash, a content hash for each file. And you can see that content hash, actually, if I remember correctly, you can just go through, uh, you can do this one here. So you can just go through the entries that you have. And instead of printing just a name, you can print a full entry. So we can print here, entry for every file that we find remotely. And here you can see we have a lot of metadata. So we have uh, the date time that this was modified, we have a bunch of different things here. But the important thing is we have a content hash. And a content hash, if you don't know what a hash is, it's a one way function, you put something in, and you get something of a fixed size. Uh, as an output, it's not really possible to reverse this process. So you cannot really get the content from this. Also, because multiple different contents might lead to the same hash, theoretically. Um, but if you change the input slightly, the output of the hash is going to be changed radically. So if I just uh, change from hello world to hello world exclamation mark, this would already massively alter the hash. So what we could do is we could just compare uh, the content hash that we have remotely and the content hash that we compute locally to see if something has changed in the file, because then we don't have to download the full file, we don't have to compare everything, we can just look at the hash. And also just comparing the size, for example, wouldn't be enough. So you can have the same size, but different content. So the hash is the best way to do that. Now, the hash, however, is not just a basic uh, SHA-256 hash or something like that. It's a specific algorithm that Dropbox content hash um, 
is computed in a specific way that we need to create a function for. So we're going to go ahead here, we're going to import hashlib, which is also core Python module, and we're going to create a function here, which we're going to call dropbox underscore content underscore hash. We're going to get a file as an input here. And um, this is basically, I think I got this code from some stack overflow question or something. Uh, but the logic is the same logic as Dropbox uses it. So it's um, Dropbox actually tells you what they're doing for the content hash, how they're computing the content hash. And you can just create your own function doing the same thing. And what they do is they basically um, define a hash chunk size four times 1024 times 1024. So they do multiple hashes on different chunks and then they somehow append them, concatenate them. So what we do here now is we say with open the file in reading bytes mode as F. And then we're going to say block hashes is just empty bytes here. And while true, what we're going to do is we're going to get a chunk, which is going to be just reading the chunk size from the file. And if we don't have a chunk, we just break. Otherwise, we continue. And we just say block hashes, we append to the block hashes, uh, the following hashlib dot sha 256 chunk digest. So we use sha 50 uh, 256, but only on a chunk, not on the full file. And then we append those chunks. And what we do here, then is we, sorry, we go here and we return hashlib sha 256 of the block hashes again and hex digest this. So if I didn't make any mistakes here, this should give us the same hash now for the files that we have remotely. So I can actually go ahead and say Dropbox content hash and I'm going to hash the image now. Image one or actually local files image one dot JPEG. I'm going to print this hash. And you can see this is the hash and you can also see that this is the same hash that we have remotely here. So this locally computed hash with this function here results in the same content hash as the function that we have remotely. This is also going to be true for uh, the two txt files. I'm not going to do that here now. Or actually, I'm going to do that to show you how radically this can change actually. So I'm going to show you text onetxt has a certain hash. This is the hash and you can see this one is the same hash here. Uh, and if I now just go ahead and even change just, just this uppercase W to a lowercase W and I run this, this is a radically different hash now. This is not even close. This is completely different now just because one tiny change was made. Yeah, so this is a good way to see if something has changed or not. And based on that now, we're going to say I want to have a function download changed that basically takes all the files that are different and replaces the local files by the cloud files. So we're going to say here for entry, actually, we're going to do the same thing as here. So for entry that we can find find locally here, this is from before, for all these entries, if os.path dot exists. So if this file is on the system, os path join local files, entry.name. If this file is present here, if it exists, we're going to compute a local hash of that file using the Dropbox content hash. Again, OS path join local files and entry name. Let me just scroll down a little bit here. Uh, and then if this local hash is not the same as the entry.content hash, if they're different, then we're going to print file has changed. We're going to print entry dot name. And we're going to download this respective file. So dbx files download to file os path join local files entry dot name and remotely or in the cloud we have slash and then the name of the entry. All right, and otherwise, um, we're going to print unchanged. 
entry dot name. And if the file does not exist in the first place, we're going to print new file entry dot name, and we're going to download it anyway. So we're going to say files download to file again, OS path. Actually, I can copy this here. Because if it's new, it's also a change tech technically, so we can just download it as well. So that is that. Uh, let's see if this works now. So right now, I think there should be no changes. So we can just go ahead and say download changed. And you can see unchanged. Now, let's say I change something here, I changed the world to a lowercase w, I run this again. And now you can see file has changed text one txt. If I go into it now, we can see it's again uppercase because we downloaded the cloud version. Now, if I do it the other way around, I can also define a function upload changed. And this function will do the opposite, it will still compare the hashes, but it's going to upload the files that are different. Uh, and it's going to also upload the files that are new, that are not existing in the cloud. So we're going to say here cloud underscore files equals e dot name for e dot, uh, or actually, we want to do we want to make this a dictionary. So e dot name shall be the key to e dot content hash. So basically, we'll then have the file name pointing to a content hash for e in dbx dot files list folder dot entries. So now we have a dictionary. And you want to say for a file in OS list directory, local files, if the file is in cloud files keys, because remember, the keys of this dictionary here are the names. So actually, uh, if this file name occurs in this dictionary, then we're going to do the following, we're going to compute a local hash, which is going to be Dropbox content hash of this file or actually of os dot path dot join local files, file. And then we're going to say, if the local hash is not equal to the cloud files, value of the key file, so of the file name. So remember, file name pointing to content hash getting the value for a file name gives us the content hash. If that is not the same, we're going to say print file changed file, and then we're going to with open, let me just scroll down here again, so that I'm not blocking all of this. With open, we're going to open up the file um, os path dot join local files and file in reading bytes mode sf. And we're going to say data equals f dot read. And then we're going to say dbx dot files upload data. And the path is going to be just file the file name here, so slash file, and the mode is going to be Dropbox dot files dot write mode over write to make sure that we can actually overwrite existing files, which is what we're doing here, essentially. Otherwise, we're going to again, print unchanged. And file and if the file does not exist online at all, we're going to say, copy this here again, and print new file. That is what we're going to do. So let's run this one here as well. Upload changed, run this unchanged. Now let's change this to lowercase w. Run this, you can see file changed text one, it's still lowercase. And if I go to the Dropbox, you can see it's now lowercase here as well. So those are the main mechanisms that you can use to automate your Dropbox procedures, you can upload all files, you can download all files, you can uh, download the changed files, you can upload the changed files. And of course, you can build a ton of things around this. So this is how you automate using Dropbox in Python. 
So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you for watching. See you in the next video and bye.